Hello guys, in this video we are going to uh, talk about the KLT tracker uh, that is Kanade Lucas Tomaski tracker but we are just going to talk about the basics that is we are going to talk about how it can uh, be used for image registration we will not talk about the video tracking in this particular video that will be the next video so let us see how we can use KLT for image registration so we know that in image registration we have two images and uh, whatever task is we have to find out the transformation matrix that can con convert or transform this particular one image into the other image so which looks the same right so that is our uh, image registration task so now um, say i have these two images one i call the input image and the other i call the template image so i want to transform this input image such that it uh, looks like the template image that is my task also please note that this x over here is bold x so this uh, basically tells it is a vector of x comma y so this is the x coordinate this is the y coordinate so uh, similarly this particular pixel over here will be 0 comma 0 for this image this is 0 comma 0 this is 0 comma 1 0 comma 1 and, and the story so now let's see what is warping and uh, we are going to focus on translation for now we'll see we'll extend this to other uh, transformations as well so suppose i have this image over here this is my input image so what i'm going to do is i'm going to warp this image so this warping is nothing but a new name for the transformation so warping that is w of x colon p that can transform this particular image to this where what is p now p is again a vector and w of x comma p is this function so what is happening is basically uh, your w of x comma p is making this image like this it is uh, translating x by p1 so you can see x is translated by p1 and y is translated by p2 so that is the basic uh, translation operation that we have done so only this notation is important because this notation is uh, uh, used uh, throughout the slide so this is the warping notation that we have used so uh, the notation will be something like this so here we have transformed the coordinates so if suppose uh, this was uh, say uh, say for now uh, this point is uh, 0 comma or uh, let let us uh, keep it the same so this this point is 0 comma 0 so that is this point is 0 comma 0 now say p1 is uh, 5 so this 0 comma 0 has uh, transformed to uh, 0 comma 5 and say this is 3 so this 0 comma 0 has transformed to uh, 5 comma 3 so here the y coordinate is 3 and the x coordinate is 5 so like that so like this we have this warping function and now i have just transformed this i of x to i of w x colon p so this w x colon p just uh, talks about the coordinates you can see over here uh, and p1 and p2 are just parameters how much you want to translate the particular image and this is what will happen if i do i of w x colon p so it is translating the image like this now uh, in in the previous side you see that i transform i transform this image like this so you can see that here this information will not be available to us so this will be like blank sort of thing so we will not consider this basically and uh, now this was our template image this this image over here is our template image so if it has shifted uh, from uh, this much p1 comma p2 so we will uh, only use this particular area and what are we going to do simple defining the cost that is we will take the mean squared difference between the two so this is our cost function that we have taken the difference between the two that is this i of x w x colon p this transformed image or warped image minus the template image that we have so we have just taken the difference and squared the difference over all x so we will do this minus this uh, square uh, and then add all the uh, add all the values so this minus this this minus this, and uh, adding all the values for x so that will be my cost that will be how how far these two images are 
so that is about the cost so now our task is just to minimize this cost so let's see how we'll do that so over here you can see that this parameters is something that is unknown we actually don't know uh, what p1 p2 will give me this transformation uh, it it'll which p1 p2 will transform the particular input to the uh, template that i want right so the p is the parameter so i'm changing this a little bit let me uh, take an initial value of p so let me take an initial value so this can be uh, some random value or this can be zero you you can take any initial value for p and then uh, iteratively i am going to add some delta p so iteratively this uh, uh, so initially p not is zero now uh, after something that i am going to do i'll get a uh, value of delta p i'll add this so that will be the new value of p again i am going to repeat the procedure for this new value of p and i am going to repeat it till uh, the cost is uh, less so this is uh, like uh, some uh, form of the gradient descent algorithm so this is very similar to the gradient descent so it is like you start with an initial value and uh, then compute gradient and uh, go in the direction of gradient this is something like that so this is the cost that we have defined now why did i use this change in p so that the answer for that is the taylor series so uh, let us first just uh, briefly go through the taylor series then we'll go come back to the cost so consider that i have a function like this so this is a scalar function of f uh, of x uh, that is f of x from uh, so this is my function f of x so what i'm doing is i'm uh, changing this notation so now this f of x not where x not is some value plus delta x so i am basically uh, splitting this x into x not plus delta x so now i can conveniently use this uh, this particular taylor series for approximating this function so uh, by taylor series i have f of x not which is this particular thing plus derivative of f of x at x is equal to x not into this del x so that is my taylor series now that is uh, okay for a scalar function this is a scalar function over here so this is okay for a scalar function but now consider that we have a vector function so i'll i'll tell you why we are you uh, why we are uh, studying this at this point so just uh, bear with me for a few minutes you'll understand uh, everything so now consider that we have a vector function which is this capital f of x so what this vector function is this uh, this function f of x is a vector having uh, f1 this is one function this is the other function like this m function so this f of x is a vector having m functions m different functions and this argument x over here also this is a vector which is having capital n uh, values so i hope this is clear that over here both the functions are vector uh, both the function and the argument both of them is vector so let us see how can we apply taylor series on this vector function so that is uh, the next thing so now consider this first function over here so this is f1 of x so i can write this f1 of x as f1 of x0 which is where this x0 is again a vector which is x0 1 uh, comma x0 2 up till x0 n plus delta x so that delta x will be delta x1 delta x2 up till delta x1 so this all bold characters are all vectors please uh, focus on this bold characters here so now this function can be approximated as same notation here there was f so similarly f1 of x0 plus you take the derivative of this function f1 with respect to x1 first now because uh, this particular f1 is a function of x1 x2 xn all all of these so you will have to take the derivative with x1 and multiply it with x1 so same notation you can see over here plus then you will have to take uh, derivative with x2 partial derivative with x2 and then multiply del x2 
similarly you have to uh, go on till uh, xn so you take the derivative till xn multiply with xn so this is what will happen with the first function that is over here similarly this this whole thing can be repeated for the second function similarly for the m function so you can see for the m mth function you will get this kind of a thing so i hope this is clear that uh, i am i am taking one function at a time and i am writing it like this so now if suppose you take so this 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 was uh, what was in the previous slide you can see uh, that is the same slide that we have so now if i take these things and make a vector out of it so f1 f2 f3 up till fn if suppose i make a vector of this so that is nothing but my capital f you can see over here so this 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 if i make a vector of these function these scalar functions then i get my capital f so here i have my capital x so these these function a vector of these functions will make this capital capital f also the vector of these functions you can see there is f1 f2 f3 up till fm you can see everywhere there is x not over here so that will make capital f of x not and over here if you see so here i have del f1 by del x1 into del x1 up till i have del f1 by del xn into del xn so what i can do is i can write these things over here so this thing i have written over here this thing i have written over here and the middle things will come over here and uh, similarly i can do for the other uh, functions that is f2 f3 and uh, other functions then i get this matrix over here also you must be thinking where did this del x1 go so all these del x ones are in this del x so th there is this again there is this vector over here which will get multiplied with these so you can see del x is nothing but this transpose so it is a um, column vector where the first value is del x1 so this value will get multiplied with this value and give you this then the second value will be del x2 so that del x2 will get multiplied with this and give you the second term and the story so like this you can see that for a vector valued function this vector valued function this derivative this del f x not by del x is nothing but a matrix and this matrix is called as the jacobian matrix so this is what is called as a jacobian of f with respect to x so this comes when f that is your function is a vector and the arguments are also a vector so at that point of time you get this matrix so uh, all these uh, images are taken from uh, this particular s tengs uh, lectures that is a uh, slides so you can see the slides over here very nice slides uh, are given by him you can also check them so uh, going forward so now we had this cost function over here so the capital f that i was discussing in the taylor series is nothing but this w so you can see that this w is a vector function why you can see that uh, w is consisting of two things so uh, this is the x coordinate this is the y coordinate or the transformed x coordinate on the transformed y coordinate and this was the original x original y so you can see that there are two things that are happening so this can be uh, said as f1 and this can be said as f2 and what is f1 it is x plus p1 what is f2 that is y plus p2 so th this is the vector function w that i was talking about and you can see that over here there is this del p so over there we had del x so there is this w which is uh, corresponding to capital f there is uh, this del x which is corresponding to del p so please don't get con confused with the notation this x over here corresponds to the coordinate and uh, over here this x x not basically corresponds to this p not and uh, this del x corresponds to del p so please don't get confused with that so that is what we have so we have this vector function w and uh, it has two uh, two functions that is this f1 and this f2 
and uh, further we are going to see if suppose i use taylor series over here so i am going to use taylor series on this particular part so what will happen is uh, i will get so this i is basically over on on this particular function so i get i of uh, when i expand this this will be the same so you can see over here so this is uh, capital f of x not plus del x so this will be like f of x not which is over here plus this del f not f x not by del x this matrix into del x so that is the same thing that is done over here so this i into this whole thing plus i have the now since there is this i so i'll have to use chain rule so first there will be the derivative of i which is seen over here derivative of i into there will be the derivative of this term so there is this chain rule that we have applied because this is like i is another function which is on uh, w it is like that so first i'll have to take the derivative of i which is over here and then applying chain rule i'll take the derivative of this so this particular thing is corresponding to this matrix oh so i have uh, printed the matrix over here so this is nothing but this matrix so let's uh, quickly take a look on what this particular derivative is so uh, this derivative if you see so here you can see this is del f1 upon a uh, uh, partial derivative with del x1 so similarly this is my first function so i will have to derivate this function with my first parameter that is p1 so derivating this function by p1 similarly derivating the same function by p2 will come over here then derivative second function with p1 will come over here derivative second function will p2 will come over here so that is what we have and if you uh, calculate the derivative you will get this identity matrix also. so because the translation is very easy so uh, this derivative with p1 is just 1 this is 0 this is 0 this is 1 so that is what we get so i hope this uh, derivative is clear so we have uh, this particular uh, modified cost function now this is our cost function now so now the next part is just to minimize the cost so in order to minimize we will just take the derivative and equate it to zero so let us see what happens so for the derivative what will happen is this you can consider as some x squared so this will come ahead so i get two times x so this is two times and this is the whole x so you can see this particular part i have written it over here and then again chain rule so again a derivative of this particular with respect to p so you can see that here now here um, there is a, a sorry so yeah so now this particular term will again get uh, again be derivated by p so you can see that only this particular term has a p that is del p so this only this term has del p so uh, that del p will go and you will just get this particular term outside so since all of these are matrices so it is there is this transform also that is added so again going through this is this is the squared kind of thing so there is two times this x this whole thing that have come over here and now there is only this del p over here so there is only this term left so this term has to be uh, again uh, taken out by the chain rule so the del p will go and only this will remain and since it is a matrix hence there is this transpose that we get over here so this is just a simple uh, uh, vector calculus that we have seen over here so now next what i'm going to do is uh, now i just want to calculate the value of del p because that is my uh, main task if i get uh, what is the value of del p then i'm done because then i'll iteratively solve this particular algorithm so i want del p on one side and other all other things on the other side so what i'm doing is i'm going to multiply this with both of these so uh, this thing is multiplied with both of these so that is i w minus t and i am taking this outside the bracket basically so this thing multiplied by this is over here and uh, i i minus t and multiplied with this is over here next i am going to take this particular term to the uh, uh, rhs 
so what will happen is it'll, it'll have a minus sign so i am going to interchange both of this so there was a minus tx uh, when it goes over there it will become plus tx and this will become minus so that is what we have over here oh uh, i have not done it yet so this is the same step uh, from behind now i am going to take all these terms in the next side so here you can see that there is a plus tx and minus tx so this has interchanged and i have taken this particular thing uh, to the right hand side and now i have this thing so now let us uh, and this this is as it is over here so now let us uh, just uh, see what this is so i am putting the transform uh, tra transpose inside so when you put transpose inside this uh, reverses so this del will come outside i mean uh, ahead with a transpose and this will come behind without a transpose the transpose of transpose is this thing. and this is what we get and there is this del p which is outside and this is the same thing so now uh, over here if you see we have calculated this as uh, this identity so it does not matter this thing and this thing will go because it is just identities and yes so we are just left with uh, this uh, del i with us so this del i is nothing but the derivative of the image so the derivative of image can be given by del i by del x so this is again a vector del i by del x del i by del y how will we get this del i so we can get that by sobel operator or uh, privet operator so use the edge detectors uh, as we have used in harris so actually we are approaching that this is nothing but the harris detector so similarly we can use uh, the x derivative uh, mask and the y derivative mask to get this this both values and you can see that this this particular thing uh, is nothing but a harris detector right so i can call this particular thing as h and then just taking the h at the other side so this becomes h inverse over here and i have del p so the value of del p is nothing but this uh, beautiful equation over here so i hope these things are clear so, so just to summarize this h is nothing but this harris detector uh, del i is nothing but this vector which is a uh, uh, edge in x direction edge in y direction uh, this is the jacobian that we calculated and uh, this is the images the template image and the warped uh, input image so now that uh, this this i uh, talked about the uh, translation case similarly we can uh, see for uh, other things so if suppose uh, there is rotation so for rotation uh, this is the matrix that we have x cos theta minus y sin theta x sin theta plus y cos theta so this is the matrix that we have so the jacobian for rotation will be something like this because over here you can see that the parameter is just theta there is only one parameter theta so because of that there is only one column so you can see these columns uh, represent the number of parameters over here we had two parameters hence there were two columns here i just have one parameter so there is only one column and the rows represent the number of functions so over here we have two functions x and y the transformed x and y coordinate so that is what we have uh, similarly for affine this is the case so if you want a general uh, kind of uh, image registration algorithm then you can use this particular matrix this uh, affine matrix because affine can take care of translation as well as rotation as well as skewness everything is uh, taken care so now uh, this is for homography now for homography uh, the derivatives might be a little uh, complex so that will be computationally inefficient so for homography what we can do is we can use some approximation so you can use the bilinear approximation which is given like this and um, you have eight parameters over here uh, so i am just use i'm bilinear approximation for this homography so you can get this or you can use the bi quadratic uh, approximation or you can use a pseudo perspective approximation so these are the different approximations that you can use which also gives a quite a decent results and these are the jacob so i did not put the jacobian for this because there were 12 parameters and it was not uh, fitting so it is quite easy it is uh, if you just uh, 
uh, stay for us uh, for some time you will understand uh, the uh, derivatives are easy for this particular one so that comes to an end so now we have everything let us just uh, finally see the algorithm uh, and uh, that's all so we have we know that this is the value of del p this is the value of del p that we ca calculated which minimizes our cost so this is the del p that we have so what what the algorithm is you have the input image you have the template image just warp it with an initial value uh, some p naught so initially you warp this uh, particular image with some p naught now this p naught can be zero or it can be any random value so it is just like gradient descent you initially start with some initial guess and that is what you have over here next uh, what you do is you subtract that particular uh, warped image from t so i am just calculating this over here so first i warped this particular i with some p naught and then uh, subtracted that with t so that is what i have over here next so uh, till here i got this particular thing next compute gradient del i so next i am going to compute this del i now how will i compute the del i it is uh, simple just take uh, x derivative that is by sobel or privet uh, you can take x derivative and y derivative so it will be a vector a del del i by del x and del i by del y so that is what you can compute next you can evaluate the jacobian so the jacobians are these uh, things so depending on what particular transformation you are looking for you can have the different jacobians with you so you can evaluate the jacobian at that particular point so now uh, for translation that is okay because this uh, jacobian is constant with respect to the parameter but others are not so for others you will have to put that value of initial guess so uh, for theta so initially say i rotate my uh, image by 15 degrees so you'll have to derivate this and put that 15 over here and evaluate so evaluate the jacobian at that particular point p which you started with right uh, so this p is because i am going to iterate so for the first iteration this is going to be p naught for first iteration this is going to be p naught next compute the steepest descent so what is the steepest descent it is nothing but this thing over here you have the jacobian you multiply it with the derivative that is your uh, h derivative a gradient next you can uh, compute the inverse hessian so which is this inverse section over here so uh, depending on what your jacobian is you can uh, get your inverse hessian over here so you have to uh, calculate this next uh, calculate uh, this particular product so i had computed this by uh, step uh, 2 and uh, this particular thing i computed over here in step 5 so you can just take this transform and multiply it with this so you get this uh, descendant error product these are just names and uh, now when you have this particular thing just multiply it with the inverse uh, harris matrix or this inverse h matrix and you can compute your del p so once you have computed del p update the parameters so for the first iteration we had p naught over here so that p naught will get updated with the new uh, p so that you will have a new p over here again uh, take the image warp it with the new p that you have got it over here uh, subtract uh, follow all these steps again you will get a value of del p again update the parameters and uh, do all the steps so this is like a recurring algorithm and you can stop uh, when a particular uh, condition is fulfilled so the condition can be say a minimum 100 iterations or uh, when say this del p value becomes very small so if this del p value is say uh, 0 0.00001 something uh, so uh, this is not a scalar please understand this is a vector of parameters so del p1 and del p2 if you see in the case of uh, a translation so here you can see that uh, p is this p1 p2 similarly del p will be change in p1 change in p2 so it is a vector so all these bold things that uh, that over here signify vectors please understand that so if these uh, these values are very small
so if you take the norm of uh, say del p and if it is very very small so then you can uh, say that uh, now the updation is not very much that means that we have uh, reached our uh, minima because of that the updation is not very much so at that point of time you can stop so that was all about the basics of the klt algorithm and by this you can find the uh, image registration of any uh, two images uh, given uh, that uh, which level of uh, transformation do you want to find so for a general case affine can find rotation as well as translation so if you are unsure if the Im uh, uh, if the two images that you have might have translation and rotation or both or any one of them you can use affine and if suppose you want to use homography as well then you can use uh, these uh, any any one of these and you can get your uh, uh, registration, image registration done. That is, you will see that your input image will then look like your uh, uh, this image, transformed image. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.